just when you thought you had seen every type of cozy game, I promise you have not. Because in today's video, I'm going to be telling you about a brand new cozy game that I think is truly unlike any other I've seen before. It's called Bandletale A League of Legends Story, a cozy crafting RPG set in a whimsical world filled with magic, knitting, and lots of parties. And don't worry, you don't need to know anything about League of Legends whatsoever to enjoy this cozy standalone game. But if you are already familiar with League of Legends, I still think you'll be able to really enjoy this new story with a bit of a cozy spin. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Peyton. It is nice to meet you. It is nice to see you and welcome to the corner. Today's video has very kindly been sponsored by Riot Forge, who gave me the opportunity to play Bandletale, a League of Legends story a little bit early. And since I got the chance to really dive in and explore all that there is to explore in this game, I am here to tell you everything I think you need to know about Bandletale, a League of Legends story before you play, which you can play yourself right now. And don't worry, even though today's video is going to be including a lot of fun details, overviews, my opinion about the game, I will not be spoiling the game for you, so you definitely can still watch this one without getting the story ruined for you. But before we get into it, please be sure to click the lovely little like button, as well as subscribe for more cozy, chaotic content, and if you want to see more of Bandletale, a League of Legends story, specifically in perhaps a live stream format, definitely be sure to subscribe here on YouTube as well as follow me over on Twitch as I plan to live stream this game on both platforms to give you even more of a taste of it. Okay, now that I said all of that, Let's get into it. So Bandletale is a cozy RPG or role-playing game that actually has a pretty big narrative focus. So let's start out by going over the main storyline. What is this about? What can we get into when we play this game? The story follows your character, a yordle, or what I call a fuzzy little adorable animal creature who lives in a place called Yarnville. And just as the name suggests, Yarnville is an island where knitting pretty much is the thing. Knitting is like what makes the world go round. We love to knit. Everybody knits yarn everywhere. The name is fitting. The story takes off when you have just finished your 101 year long apprenticeship that taught you, of course, all about knitting and crafting. But this 101 year long apprenticeship kept you totally isolated from the rest of Vandal City. So now that you've finally crossed the finish line, you decide you wanna explore what's on the other side of the portal and see what lies outside of Yarnville so you can really set your life in motion. So you decide to instantly get a little crazy and attend a party with your best buddy Clover. But once you're there, things go wrong. Like the worst party you've ever been to times 100 wrong. Because Bandal City gets totally split apart, leaving no way to get to the once connecting lands and making some of your friends completely lost. So it's your job to use what you've learned to travel to new places, craft and knit yourself out of sticky situations, throw parties, and enlist the help of League of Legends champions to reunite Bandal City and locate your lost friends. So now that I've told you a little bit about the story, let's talk about some of the characters you'll be able to meet along the way. Now there are actually a lot of characters in this game, too many to fit in this video. So we're gonna just take a look at some of the notable ones. All of the characters in Bandletail are a species called Yordle. Well, except for a sentient sock. But other than that, they're, they're pretty much all yordles. And like I said, yordles are a species of adorable mammal-like creatures. They stand on two legs. And even though they are the same species, they come in quite a variety of shapes, sizes, and colors, all with a lot of personality. 
So let's start out with the Yordles of Yarnville, starting with you, yourself as the player. Your character is fully customizable, and you'll begin your journey by choosing your Yordle's fur color, ear shape, name, pronouns, accessories, and a whole lot more. And if you're like me, you may be stuck on this screen for a while because there are a lot of very cute options to make your character look as vibrant and fun as possible. But of course, you don't live in Yarnville all by yourself. So notably, there's also Gramps, who is the Yordle that you've done your apprenticeship with, and he's taught you pretty much everything you know, at least at the beginning of the game. Then there's Clover, your very best friend. In Yarnville, you'll also get to know Winstock, Frankel, and of course, Rosalind, who is an adorable little gardener. There's also this one couple that fights with each other and has bad communication skills that you may need to be the messenger for. And of course, there is a sock called Righty who seems to be missing their other pair. Outside of Yarnville, there are tons of other characters to get to know, like Ozzy, the Yordle who threw the party that caused the mass destruction across Vandal City. Shout out to him, doing great, doing great. And of course, there are the League of Legends champion Yordles. These are like the people. There's Corky, the pilot who has an amazing mustache and he'll help you fly from place to place. There's Lulu, the beautiful mage who stirs up magical illusions. There's a Rumble, the inventor who has just a little bit of a temper. There's Timo, an enthusiastic scout who is always sure to bring the positive vibes. There's Tristana, an adventurous warrior. There's Vagar, a free-spirited sorcerer. And Yumi, a magical cat. There's also these adorable little pet-like creatures in the game called Poros, and they're pretty much like cute little fluffball pets. In addition to all of these characters, there are unique characters in every other place you'll get to experience in the game, but I won't spoil those ones for you because the characters are very unique to the location that you'll find them in. Moving on, let's talk about some of the gameplay features. So you know the game is very narrative focused, you know there are really cute characters, but what are you actually going to be doing in the game? Well, you're going to be doing a few different things. The gameplay is gonna center around a few different mechanics, but mainly you'll need to engage in gathering, you'll gather naturally unnatural resources from the strange world around you, you'll of course have to do tons of crafting, You'll craft workstations and build quest items from the convenience of your bigger on the inside backpack house. You'll also need to discover and use the portal system to travel between six uniquely themed islands, all of various styles. You'll also fulfill quests with the League of Legends champions, taking advantage of a skill tree that will help you learn many skills across a variety of disciplines, from gardening to cooking to more. You'll also level up your relationships with the Yordle champions by throwing your own parties. <laughs> like this is the only game I have ever played where I need to be a good hostess. I better make sure there are snacks. I have to make my party desirable so I can make friends and I just think that is so funny and I love it. In addition to this, you'll also farm unusual crops for cooking enchanting recipes to help gain the esteem of your fellow Yordles to of course host the perfect party to unite all of the Bandal City inhabitants and restore the balance of the world. In essence, the game is about exploration, crafting, cooking slash party throwing, and questing slash relationship building. And all of these mechanics are important for following the game's main storyline to help reunite Bandle City. Now this is a cozy gaming channel, so of course we need to touch on what I'm calling the coziness factor of the game. Now the word cozy and cozy gaming is totally subjective. Your idea of a cozy game might be different than mine and that's okay but I'm going to point out some of the features of this game that I think make it in particularly very cozy. So what makes Bandletail cozy? I think the obvious thing to start out with is the environment. It has electric, bright colors. It is just so full of life. And of course the characters are very cutesy and adorable. Now the environment is what first drew me into the game when I saw the trailer last year. I remember I reacted to it in a Nintendo Direct and I was just 
speechless. It already grabbed me just from the visual style. One little hero, one humongous problem. Welcome to Vandal City, a whimsical land inhabited by small fuzzy beings called Yordles. After a party gets a little too wild, the portals holding the land together collapse. Yes! And pro it just like exudes the idea of fun and chill vibes. And not only is the visual style very pleasing, but it is accompanied by a very chill lo-fi soundtrack. And of course, there are lots of different music styles that can be considered cozy. But for myself personally, when I think of cozy, lo-fi is always my favorite thing. I'm always listening to lo-fi whenever I'm doing pretty much anything ever. So this game will set you up with a lovely, magical lo-fi soundtrack that really goes along with the visual style you'll see. I think out of everything though, the thing that makes this game feel very cozy to me is the knitting and crafting influence. We're in a time where most of the cozy games we're seeing are farming based, and there is definitely a little little bit of farming in Bandle Tail, but it is really focused on the crafting and specifically the knitting style. I've played tons of crafting games before, but I've never played a game quite like this one where I'm repairing bridges with yarn and walking around with a boot made out of yarn. I think that the knitting influence just really makes this one feel so warm and fuzzy to me. Specifically in Yarnville, the place you're from, all of the roads are just like knitted carpets. <laughs> so it really makes it feel just so like wholesome and sweet. And it, I feel like it makes it feel really unique. Something else I find really cozy about this game is the day to night cycle doesn't pressure you to go to bed. There is no like passing out or, oh no, I missed my bedtime. Now I'm not gonna have energy to be able to do the things I wanna do. The game does feature a version of a day to night cycle. So as you play, you will see the different times of day. It'll get a little bit darker. And you do need to eventually go to sleep because that's how you gain more points to acquire more skills. But the game isn't going to punish you. It's not going to count down to the next time you need to get to bed, which is something that I struggle with in a lot of my favorite cozy games because sometimes the days feel like they go by so fast and there's never enough time to do anything. And I frequently pass out and never make it into bed on time. So I like that Bandletail does feature the opportunity to see the day go from daytime to nighttime and the dreaming is important but it just feels less intense and definitely more cozy you'll see the changes of the time but you won't be penalized for not doing tasks in a timely manner there are tons of different things to do in the game and it really does make you feel like you can do things at your own pace which i think lends to the overall coziness factor of it i don't feel stressed when i'm playing and so with that because there's not a strict day to night system the game will also give you the ability to save from anywhere which is one of my features when i play a cozy game because you know real life gets in the way so Sometimes, and there are so many games where I'll start a, like a day and then I'll either have to forego the progress I've made in the day or speed run it to the end because maybe I don't have time to finish the day. My in real life has taken me out and I need to go do something else. So I really like the option that you can save from anywhere in this game, as well as the game will auto save for you. So if you're bad at remembering to save, like I am, the game will have you covered. Another thing I think is really cozy about this game is I think they do a really good job with the tutorials. I am notoriously bad for not listening to tutorials and then instantly being confused. This game I feel like does a really good job of breaking down what you need to do. It doesn't feel like but still feels like it leaves things up for you to discover. It's not going to tell you how to do every single thing, but I do think it guides you. It doesn't just kind of like throw you out there and have you figure everything out yourself. And if you're like me and sometimes things didn't click in your brain, you can revisit old tutorials in case you missed them or in case you just need to double check something. Going off of that, the map system I think is very easy to understand. Not only does it show you the map pretty clearly, but it will actually isolate different places, specifically like characters' homes, and it'll show you them outside of the main map. So if you're looking for like Gramps' house, for example, and you don't quite remember where that is, you'll actually see Gramps' house just by itself. 
you can click on it and then it will show you where it is on the map, which I really like because I'm bad at directions all the time, even when I'm looking at a map. So I feel like it makes it really easy and the world doesn't feel too overwhelming to explore. There are lots of places to go, but I think that they make it pretty easy to remember where it is you need to get back to. And something else that I really love about the game that I think makes it very cozy is the skill tree progression. There are a lot of skills that your character will learn in the game, which I think is so fun and exciting. And the interface I think is very easy and seamless. It's clear what everything is there to do. But what I enjoy so much about the skill tree progression is it doesn't give you everything all at once, which I think can be quite overwhelming. I think if you start the game knowing how to do all of the cooking and all of the gardening and all of the harvesting different materials and the crafting, I think it could be a little bit much all at once. So I feel like the progression is really nice. You also have the option to redeem certain skills first over others. The main story will of course ask you to, you know, prioritize like learning a certain skill at a certain point to progress. But there are a lot of times where you kind of get to pick and choose what skill you want to focus on next, which I think really lends to the overall coziness of it because it feels more customizable. It feels like the experience is very tailored to you. And even though you're following a narrative, you can kind of navigate that narrative in different ways. Okay, now let's talk about the facts. Let's talk about the platforms this game is coming out on. Like I said, you can purchase this game right now. It is available both on Nintendo Switch, so you can purchase it in the Nintendo eShop, and it's available for PC. Both platforms have the game at the same price of $24.99. I'm talking in US dollars. And both platforms will not only give you the option to purchase the regular game, but they'll also give you the option to purchase the deluxe edition at $29.99, which will include some more features. The deluxe edition will include the following. It'll include a Poro closet where you can dress up your little fluffy Poro pal in two different exclusive and very cute outfits. The deluxe edition will also include the home sweet backpack, which will give you two different eye-catching exteriors for your backpack home. It will also include the strut with style option, which will give you some more pathway effects for your characters. Specifically, this one will give three different pathway effects called Busy Bee, Zip Zap, and Full Speed Ahead. And finally, the deluxe edition will include the secret menu where you can add three additional recipes to your cookbook, specifically the rainbow egg, the almost perilous pie, and the Poro snacks. So now I have told you so many things about Bandletail, A League of Legends story without spoiling the game for you, just kind of like setting you up, giving you a taste of what you're in for. So far, I'm not gonna lie, this was one of my most highly anticipated cozy games of the year. Like I said earlier, I found out about this game last year. I reacted to a Nintendo Direct and this game was included in it. And I remember saying on that stream, and I've been saying it since, that that knitting game is going to change my life. It is going to be so good. To stitch Bandel City back together. Knitting magic? Journey. Oh, this is the best one. Bandel Tale, a League of Legends story. So I had really high expectations coming into this one. And so far, I have to say the game has exceeded my expectations. I really love that it is so narrative focused, but it also does feel like there's a nice amount of customization. I like the cooking aspect. I love the party throwing. I really love the characters, the different quests you can do for them. And overall, it is a very cozy experience. When I boot up this game, I feel happy, I feel joyful, and I feel invested in what's going on. So I definitely recommend checking it out. And thank you again to Riot Forge for sponsoring this video and giving me the opportunity to get to play this game a little bit early. Like I said, I will be covering this game a little bit more on the channel. So if you're interested to hear even more thoughts, if you're interested to see gameplay, you can check out my live streams and also upcoming videos as I definitely plan to be playing more of Vandal Tale because I really do think it is a unique and fun cozy game. But I want to know your thoughts down below. Will you be picking up Bandel Tale, A League of Legends Story? And what looks interesting to you? I want to hear all of your thoughts down below. Like I said, you can purchase the game over on Steam or in the Nintendo eShop, as well as check out the Deluxe Edition in case you're interested in some more goodies as well. 
Please be sure to click the lovely little like button on your way out, as well as subscribe for more cozy, chaotic content. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one, and bye bye